Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 48 of the Darab Creations Crochet Podcast. My name's Nicole, and I'm coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, here in Canada, where I live with my husband, Barry, and my beautiful, wonderful, rescued Rottweiler named Grace. How are you doing? Wow, the world's going crazy around us. I don't even know what to say. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I hope that everyone is, is staying calm, staying healthy, staying safe. There have been some changes around here. Um, as those of you who have watched me for a while know, I have been off work for quite some time waiting for my knee replacement. Um, my husband uh, is in day two now of working from home. So luckily, uh, our internet and our, well, his computer room set up down there is, uh, is strong enough. Uh, the, the, the equipment he's got is good enough that he is able to work from home, um, work remotely. Um, not everyone in his office is able to do that because of the the amount of computing that has to take place in order for him to do his job. He he's he's a draftsman, so he's drafting buildings and whatnot. So, yeah, it's it you can't do that on your phone. <laughs> but luckily, um, we are in a position that he's able to do that from home. So that's a good thing. Um, so we're hunkered down. I would have to say that our neighborhood has remained very very calm um definitely see more cars home during the day less people out on the streets um everybody just trying to trying to keep safe um yeah so let's get on to some crochet goodness shall we because that's what we're here for let's leave those problems behind for just a little while and talk about some crochet so it's been two weeks since I last spoke to you. Um, I have a number of things to share with you as finish, finished objects. I have a couple of works in progress to share with you as well. And then at the end of today's uh, episode, we will draw the prize for the 500 subscriber giveaway that I talked about last week. Um, thank you to everyone who is joining me today. If you are a regular subscriber, thank you. It's so nice to see you again. If you are new here, I hope you enjoy what, what we do here. Um, if so, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the, hit the like button. Um, and come on back every two weeks for another, another crochet update. You will perhaps notice that on this channel, I also uh, do a bi-weekly floss tube, so it alternates week to week, crochet and, and, and cross stitch. Um, you're welcome to join for both, or for one or the other. But today, it's all about crochet. So, shall we get into a few finishes? So let me start out with a finish that you guys have seen as it's been going along, and that is the baby sweater that I have created for my new grandbaby that is on the way. Um, so this sweater is a design by Kat Golden, and the yarn used is Stranded Dye Works, so Amy Florence over at Stranded Dye Works, in the colorway Gloom. So it's a nice variegated uh, gray color. Um, I really enjoyed the pattern, as I said last time, uh, and I love the yarn, as I also said last time. Um, and the addition and the final uh, thing, of course, it came off the blocking mats, but was the addition of the little owl buttons. I will have a picture of all of the finishes that I've done at the end of the video. So if you'd like to have a, a closer look at some of these elements, make sure you stay tuned. So the little owl buttons that I got, I picked them up at Fabricland. Um, I had originally picked up some buttons at um, Michael's, but they were really plain, just round brown buttons. And when I saw these ones, these were the, the cuteness that I was looking for. 
So they're little owls. All of them are a little bit different in their colorways. And I think they are adorable um, and very uh, applicable to both a boy or a girl. So this sweater is ready and is in the box of goodies for my new grandbaby when he or she should arrive. I will have linked all of the projects down below in the description box as well. So never fear if you're looking for some further information on some of these patterns, I will link below. So the next thing I did, I showed you all some, um, some, uh, yarn that I had picked up at Michael's and was contemplating doing stockings with them. Now, you may or may not know that I do, uh, Christmas, fall and Christmas markets. Um, and I was uh, looking at doing some stockings for the markets this year. And this is the prototype stocking that I will be doing. Um, so I based it primarily on a actual sock pattern. Um, it has a, a heel that's done as you go. Um, it is worked from the top down. Um, so it ends at the toe, but it's a really nice ending to the toe as well, nicely rounded off. I will be lining these, um, and this is the start. So there's going to be these plain gray ones like this. I will have some that have uh, contrast heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, just a, a nice selection of stockings in the colors that will uh, support my market choices this year. So that is the new stocking pattern. Um, I've also been working on um, some product for my fall craft fairs, which tend to have a Halloween focus. And this little witch's hat is the first of the uh, patterns that I'm developing for that product line. So this is my own pattern. Um, it is done in impe impeccable yarns, and it is sized to fit a child's head. And it is, of course, a little witch's hat. Um, it is worked from the top down uh, with some increasing along the way. Um, the brim is attached directly to the hat. There is a single row of uh, front loop only uh, crochet, single crochet stitches that start the uh, brim out and then it's all done through increases as well. And it has this nice little contrast band in, an, in another color. So I'll be having these in a variety of colors, um, but all Halloween. So the purple with the black, I will likely have um, some that are solid black with maybe orange and some orange with black as well. So uh, a few of the very traditional Halloween colors um, in the Little Witch's Hat. Um, now the Little Witch's Hat, I plan to uh, eventually write up this pattern and have it on my, on my Etsy page. So there's that. And finally, in the finished objects category, is a whole bowl of little Easter eggs. So I am working on a couple of uh, Easter projects um, in my cross-stitch life, um, and these will be a part of the display for that, uh, those, uh, those designs. So the eggs themselves are just an ad-libbed shape. Um, I'm starting them from the top, and working down. It's done amigurumi style in a single crochet um, with some increases, then some uh, just uh, one on one, and then some more uh, increases, and then straight into decreases to get this nice bulbous look at the bottom. But I really like the shape of those. I am quite pleased with how those have turned out. And so far, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three, yes, nine. So not quite a full dozen but there will be eventually, I am sure. So all the different colors represented, some light pinks or some bright pinks and some, some more neutral pinks. Uh, most of the colors tend to be neutral because that's more of my, uh, my personal palette. So those are the finished objects for the past two weeks. I am going to step away for a moment. When I come back, we can talk about some works in progress. So some of the things that are currently on my hook. Um, as a lot of us are doing right now, it seems to be a stash busting kind of year. Um, and I think that the whole uh, self-isolation and, and, you know, that, that whole, yeah, the whole 
what we're experiencing right now with the virus um, is is adding to that. I think I'm definitely in the mood to, you know, relook at some of my scraps and my bits and pieces and figure out what to do with them. And, and uh, yeah, lots of scrap busting going on right now. So um, in that spirit, I have this. And you're going to say, Nicole, what the heck is that? These are the first round of a multitude of granny squares. So I have a couple of my, the pink ones, and I of course haven't sewn in ends yet. Um, so this is the very interior of a granny square. And I have so far two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. 16, 18, 20, 21, 23, 24, 25 um, of the very middle. So what I'm doing is I'm going through my scrap bin and I am picking out colors and doing up one or two middle sections of all the different colors. And that's going to be the middle part of the granny square. Um, I'm going to be doing a big blanket. The second round will be all in the same colors, but of course in different orders. So you might have green on pink or, or that green on pink or maybe some orange on pink. Just random, randomize. The only thing is, is you can't have the same color on top of it. So I want two different colors. So it'll be rounded with another color. Um, and that's as big as the squares are going to be. So they're going to be very small little squares. I didn't want big granny squares, just small ones. Um, there will be a third round done in a joining color. And then I'm going to be joining them together with that color. Join as you go, hopefully. Um, I haven't yet decided what color I'm going to do to join them with. Um, I recently watched uh, Debbie over at the Canadian Crotcheter, and she showed a beautiful, beautiful scrappy granny blanket that she made um, that she bordered all in black, and it looked stunning, almost like stained glass. It's so beautiful. But I've also been watching um, Sandra over at Cherry Heart. Um, she is also a, a crochet podcaster over from England. And she has, a, she does a lot with granny squares and just has a way of choosing colors and whatnot in granny square projects that just is absolutely stunning. Dunning. And one of the projects she did, it was actually a granny square skirt, but she's got all these different colors in the small little granny squares like this. And she bordered it all with a, uh, I believe she said it was a robin's egg blue. And it too looked absolutely amazing. So I'm not sure what color is going to be the final round and the joining of all of these squares. Um, but if, of course, won't be scrap. It'll be something that I do have to have to probably purchase um, to have enough of it. Um, but it, as I said, it could be blacks, it could be beiges, it could be even just a, a a color like that baby egg blue she she chose on hers looked absolutely stunning so I'm not sure what direction I'm going to go with the with the final um, round if you have a suggestion what's your favorite color what would you do that final round in um, but I will keep you in the loop on this project of course as you can see I need to do some sewing in of the ends on the first uh, set of of rounds so this is probably my newest project that I have just started. Like I said, I'm really in a scrappy mood right now. Um, it started with the Easter eggs that I've shown already, and it's now gone into a scrap blanket. So that's probably a good thing. So the other thing I have on the hook right now is another project for my new grandbaby. Um, and it's almost a finished project. So I have this little hat that I've done up. Um, you may recognize the gray. It is the leftover from the little uh, sweater that I did. Um, so that is Stranded Dye Works Merino DK in the colorway Gloom. And this orange color is a, a skein. Oh my goodness, I wonder if I have... I have a full skein. Hold, please. All right, so I have a full skein of the orangey yellow color and it's a Sheep Happens Merino DK. So same, um, same uh, yarn, but just from different dyers. Um, and it is an ochre colorway. 
I love this color. Um, and I love the yarn. It is the same base that I did my, uh, the mittens pattern that I just released, the Troshu mittens. Um, it's the same yarn, just in a different color. So, um, there you have it. There is the little hat gray with the orange border. And again, I feel that these colors are very gender neutral and it will work very well for my new grandbaby, no matter if it's a grandbaby boy or a grandbaby girl. Um, and then to go with that, I have completed one uh, of a pair of little booties. And here it is, again, in that same uh, Merino DK. So it's 100% superwash Merino, I think. Yeah, 100% superwash Merino. So there's no nylon content in that. But baby's not going to be walking around in these booties anyway. Um, so it's not going to have a lot of wear. And again, look at that wonderful color variegation. How wonderfully that works up. I really like this little booties pattern. Um, it's got the sort of the longer uh, cuff on it. Um, now, if, uh, if mom and dad do uh, so uh, want, they can roll down that little cuff um, and have it shorter, but I personally sort of like it as a muckluck shape. And there it is. So both this hat pattern and these booties have come out of this book. So this is the Crochet One Skein Wonders for Babies, um, edited by Judith Durant and Eddie Ekman. So lots of different patterns in here um, by different designers. Um, and it's all been brought together by the two editors of the book. This is a phenomenal resource. I really appreciate that the projects in here all take one skein of yarn or less. So it's a nice way to use up your single skeins. Um, and it has everything in it from, um, let me see, the different chapters are Little Hats and Caps. And there's probably 15 or 20 uh, projects in each category. So little hats and caps, little socks and booties, tops and dresses, bottoms, bibs and washcloths, little toys, blankets and sacks, bags and accessories. So lots of different, um, a, a good variety of projects in this book. I paid $28.95 for this book in a local bookstore, um, but I'm sure you could probably find it for less online um, through Amazon or through other, uh, other uh, outlets, um, as well as, you know, watch your used bookstores for things like this, because I have seen some really great um, pattern books in used bookstores, so also a really good resource but really pleased with how that's coming along. And I think that's going to be a cute little addition to the basket of baby things that I am accumulating. And they are being housed, I should show you, in my long view creation um, zippered project bag. A, a great size for uh, socks or small projects like hats and baby booties. Alrighty, so those are the two uh, projects that I thought I would share with you as works in progress. There are other scattered works in progress around my craft room as I look around, um, but uh, those are the two that I'm going to share with you today. So that leaves us with the drawing of the 500 subscriber giveaway prize. So I'm going to step away for one second. I will be right back and we will make that draw. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for, the prize drawing for the 500 subscriber giveaway. So I'd like to start out by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has been watching and subscribing and joining along. It is, it's amazing. Um, the channel is growing quite a bit right now. I think the addition or the separation of the, the cross stitch um, has helped because it's pulling a lot of people in um, who wouldn't have looked before. Um, I've had a few uh, amazing shout outs from across the crochet and floss tube communities. And that, of course, 
helps as well. So as a thank you for 500 subscribers, I came up with a giveaway. We talked about it last week, but I just want to review what is included in the 500 subscriber giveaway prize. So first off, we have, let me just snip that off. We have um, from my own Etsy shop, a project bag um, of my own making that is a uh, sea turtles uh, with this coordinating fabric at the bottom and this fabric does truly coordinate with the sea turtles in fact the pink sea turtle around uh the sea turtle i like to say it's a she because it's pink around her shell is this exact pattern so it is meant to be together um actually it is it is a a um, line of quilt fabrics i want to say it's a riley blake design but i could be wrong i could be completely off base there but they are two uh pieces that did perfectly go together um they were meant to go together um and inside this boxed bottom um drawstring project bag is two skeins of Pantone bamboo yarn. Um, and these are the, uh, the five mini skeins all joined together. Um, two that match perfectly, so you'll have enough to do a project with. The colorway is Sunset Sky. So those are included in the giveaway. And finally, a nice little uh, stitch marker or progress keeper made by yours truly um, and it is a sea turtle as well so it all does go together quite nicely in my opinion so there were i believe 37 unique commenters um, on last week's video last week not last week two weeks ago the last crochet video in which we announced the the winner and or the the the, the, the giveaway itself we're announcing the winner today um, and I have done the draw using the YouTube random comment picker and I will insert the picture uh, to show you the winner here. So congratulations Delisa Ellington. You are my winner. Thank you so much for being a subscriber Thank you so much for entering to win the product, the prize. Now I have already commented on your comment, Delisa, um, and uh, asked you to please contact me uh, with your mailing address so that I can get this out in the mail to you as quickly as possible. I also have an apology to make. I had uh, been doing a bunch of giveaways and had been trying to get things mailed off to people. And February 3rd, I did mail off a package to um, Kathy Lawrence. That package has been returned to me as undeliverable. So I checked the address and I don't know what I was thinking, but I miswrote your address on the package and it was sent back to me. So I am going to readdress the package with your correct address and send that back out to you. Please accept my apologies. Your parcel is going to be on the way. I promise. Thank you so much for your patience. All right. So now that all the hoopla is over, again, congratulations to Lisa. I want to take the opportunity again to thank everyone who has decided to come along on this journey with me, um, who come back every two weeks to see what I've been up to, um, who do lots of, of communicating with me down below. Now, I do have to say that I, I liked all of the comments that were coming in off the last video, but I really didn't respond to any of them. I didn't want to do anything that was going to screw up with any kind of algorithms um, when it came to choosing the winner. So it's not that I didn't want to answer your questions or that I've forgotten about you. Um, I just... 
I didn't want to do anything that was going to make any difference to the drawing of the name. So I assure you with this week's uh, upload, I will go back to, you know, answering all of those, those comments that get made on the, on the video. And thank you for making them. It really is nice to know that I'm just not sitting here talking to my camera. Well, technically, I am just sitting here talking to my camera, but eventually somebody else hears it. All right, that's about all that I have for you today. Um, I want to I wanna just remind everybody that m now more than ever, we need to choose kindness. Make sure, you know, a lot of us are self-professed uh, recluses already. Um, introverts. I know I am naturally very introverted. I learned how to be an extrovert um, working in the retail world, but my comfort zone is just being all by myself here in my craft room. Um, that's where I like it the best. But for a lot of people right now who are having to do things like self-isolation, they're not introverts. And they're, they're probably going to need a little bit of extra support. Chances are they're not doing okay. For all of us introverts, we need to think about what it's like when we're forced into those big social gatherings and how horribly uncomfortable it feels and how you just, you just want to crawl out of your own skin. That is how our extroverted friends, family, and neighbors are feeling right now. Reach out to them. Let's keep doing stuff like this. Let, let's keep communicating with each other using things like YouTube. Uh, make sure that, you know, you're commenting on, on videos and that, you know, if you're a podcaster, take the extra seconds to answer those, those, uh, comments. You may be somebody's lifeline in all this. And I know that sounds really big, but for some people, this is going to be extremely difficult. Some of us, we've been preparing for this our whole lives. Um, <laughs> But for a lot of people, all seriousness, this is going to be really hard. Make sure you reach out to those people. Reach out to those extroverts because they're not okay right now. Make sure you're getting outside. It's okay to go outside. Just remember your social distancing. So keep that space between you and, and the people around you. But it's okay. In fact, it's really important to go outside. So get some time outside. Take some time to to reach out to those those extroverts who are going to need us right now. It's our introverted time to shine, but you know the extroverts are going to be a little hurting right now. So take some time, reach out to them, check on those uh, those folks in your life who may need some extra support. Um, we're all in this together, people. Let's do what we can to help each other out. All right. Until next time. Remember, choose kindness. Bye now.